because of the um, ambitious agenda that was set out by, by, by the FSA. The UK banks are, qu are quite advanced. Rather than starting with you know, how we've managed to, how, how we now think about the costs, I, mean, I think our starting point was, um, and, and this, this was a significant piece of work and effort, was to understand and quantify all of the risks, um, understand the drivers of those risks, um, and then look to, uh, to, to address those. And in, and in doing so, we've been able to identify um, those areas um, around the, our general approach to funding and our, um, and our intraday uh, liquidity usage where there, there, were, there were certain in, inefficiencies. We've also been able to identify those activities, um, and business activities, customer activities, which, um, which w were somewhat costly from, uh, fr from you know, the perspective of the provision of, uh, of, of uh, of liquidity or the provision of intraday credit. The most obvious um, identification of, of, of the change in the market has been in, in the short-term money markets, in, in the funding activity at the very short end. Our focus in terms of our pricing, in terms of our deposit gathering, and in terms of our, um, in terms of our lending is, you know, very much, um, is, is, is very much at the longer end of, uh, of, of the maturity spectrum. We see um, bank treasuries looking really to standardize and centralize their liquidity management practices and policies. Um, and they're really taking a leaf out of the corporate book. I think the banks are seeking greater visibility and control over their liquidity usage, both on an intraday basis um, and even longer term um, into their structural funding sources. And the first thing that we did uh, was to change the reporting cycles and accelerate a lot of those reporting cycles from monthly, you know, all the way up to daily. The banks are going to have to get more client-centric. Um, for two reasons, the asset side and the liability side. Uh, on the asset side, you know, the balance sheet's going to cost more with the liquidity buffers. Mm -hmm. So when you're using the balance sheet, you've got to put more products into the clients to actually kind of get back the cost of using the, incre the increasingly constrained resource. <clears throat> on the liability side, the regulations actually build in additional benefit if you're taking deposits from your core customers. Overall, the balance sheet is likely to be more expensive, and when you use it, use it well. The, the new normal for banks is going to be a lot more client-centric uh, with less focus on proprietary activities. Banks will, will obviously look to deepen their client relationships because the use of the balance sheet is becoming much more expensive and they're going to look at the cost benefit of maintaining a relationship. Um, and I think that's all very good news for our clients because I think they're going to get better service. Um, you know, from their bank providers. I think information is just so critical. We're all talking about how, you know, in order to be able to manage liquidity more effectively, we have to have, we have, to have real time or near time visibility into those positions and into the flows. So I think information and data management will be a critical area of focus uh, for the banks going, going forward. Also, key <coughs> management and establishing greater control over, fly, over flows between both buyers and suppliers. We, I think, are all collectively having to go through um, this, uh, this experience of, of at, a very, um, at, at, a, at a very detailed level, ensuring that the pricing that the products experience, um, the, these internal rewards, the transfer pricing, funds transfer pricing, how, however you want to describe it, um, is appropriate to the products. And that is, um, that, that requires as a first step that you understand uh, your clients and understand the products that your clients are purchasing. For, for a lot of the businesses, there's then the, the, the need to go through a, um, a almost complete transformation in the way that they think about their interactions with the clients and how they incorporate this internal dynamic um, into, um, in, in, into their business. You know, the challenges that, that are now, um, you know, coming to the fore are executing on the strategy um, and, and basically turning, you know, some of the ad hoc short-term solutions into longer-term, um, um, more automated uh, processes, you know, basically um, getting rid of the Excel spreadsheets and all of the manual inputs and looking to a set of very standardized um, um, data sets. Uh, that we can manage both internally and, and for the benefit of our clients. The main challenge uh, has been pricing money correctly. Yeah. Uh, largely the, the cost of liquidity was forgotten about. The biggest challenge is explaining that lot to the business. Any um, initiative that supports standardization of reporting formats is critical for data management purposes. Um, you know, we're all trying to get to a point of standardization. Um, 
and consistency. And so Swift, I know, is working on some new message types and XML uh, formats that give more detail uh, in terms of the transaction itself and advising and confirmations and the like. Um, any e of the EU initiatives around um, you know, payment standardization, uh, SEPA, PSD, et cetera, I think those are helpful. Uh, the use, uh, the extended use of exchanges and clearing houses, I think is something that you know, we're all kind of looking at as not only a way to reduce counterparty risk, but to provide more you know, consolidated and consistent uh, management of liquidity. An important lesson fr from the financial crisis is that uh, if you have individually sound institutions, that does not mean that the system as a whole functions well. So one of the main uh, lessons is that we have to focus our supervision more on the system as a whole. That's what we call a macro uh, prudential supervision nowadays. And what does that mean, macro prudential supervision? That has at least uh, four, four elements. One, elements is, uh, one element is monitoring the financial system as a whole, trying uh, to, to spot the risks uh, early on. Uh, another element, an important element that's being uh, developed at the moment is trying to find instruments uh, for dealing with uh, macroprudential supervision. Uh, and the par part of the new uh, Basel regulation can be seen as part of it, counter-cyclical buffers, for instance. Uh, but other instruments are low-to-value ratio uh, in, in, in housing markets, uh, for instance. So instruments. And then the third element is uh, thinking about uh, a crisis management uh, framework. And finally, there's a lot of emphasis on designing the financial uh, infrastructure in such a way that it is resilient and that it in itself is not a cause for instability.